Hi, my name's Derek and you're watching the Bayside Games DevVlog tutorial for Robots Can't Jump. In this tutorial, we are uh, creating a particle manager. So we left off in our last uh, little bit of code, we were just about to do the um, submission of the primitives to the GPU, which happens once a frame. So we've already set up all of our streams and we've turned off streams that we don't want to interfere with what we're doing. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to use the draw prims fun function uh, which draws a series of primitives from streams that have already been set and we're just going to use the quad list type of primitive so I'll just go back to the documentation and show you that briefly so the quad list is just sort of a, this list of quads so you can see these almost beginning to look like our particles they're just squares and inside our particles will have textures so they may not actually be square in the final output but in what we're drawing they will be square and we've set up these indices and vertices to go around them and everything. So the most important thing here is the number of drawn quads is the number of indices divided by four. So let's go back. So draw primitives, we know we want that type. And now what we're actually going to do is give it the indices. And this is a stream, but it's not used. We're not going to use set stream for this. We're just going to use m stream indices. And then we have to tell it how many indexes they are, which is this, because we're using such a simple system. It's always just the number of particles times four. Each particle has four indices because it has four verts and four colors. And that's literally all there is to it. Um, we don't really need to do anything else to render our particles. So let's review um, right from the top what we've done so far. So we have a particle manager. Um, it has an update loop. It has a render loop. You can add a particle container to it. We can make a new particle container and you can destroy them. And in the particle container itself, um, you can create it. We will need to fill in these parameters. Uh, we'll go back to them in a sec. But what we're doing right now is just temporarily just add a single particle. Just for testing, just so we can make sure everything renders right and with a very simple code, piece of code so that we can easily find errors. Um, it, when it destroys, it just deletes all of its relevant streams. Adding a particle just sticks one onto the back of the array and it checks that you have enough space in the array. Very, very simple. Um, the position is just centered around the, the origin of this system, this particle system. Later on, uh, these positions are going to change. Um, when we're updating and when we're just sort of uh, moving around our particles, this is essentially where particle attributes are changed once a frame. We take this, um, these quadverts we copy them in, we scale and we translate them and we turn copy them in turn into our vertex stream using this current vert object. Then we set up a default index and just some colors. Um, later on, these things will get a little bit more interesting. For now, it's just very simple. We just want to get something on the screen and work from there. The render method is called immediately after update. Uh, we compute a view space origin for all of our particles in the system using the center of this particle system, uh, which has to be transformed into view space using this little uh, transform back function. That's really easy to understand. And once we're in view space, we can submit the streams for our vertexes and colors. We turn on lighting just to be safe. And then finally, we submit these streams. So these streams are used by draw prims when it submits the quad list. We're submitting um, the number of particles times four, that's the number of indices we're submitting from our index stream which is also set up at the same time as our vertex stream because the two go hand in hand. That's very simple. But the last thing we need to do before we can give this thing a trial run, which is really exciting, is to go back to the particle manager. Now I've noticed that we're calling the constructor of particle container, but we only give it one argument. That's wrong. Uh, we've added a whole bunch of things in the meantime. Let's grab these things, the position and the spawn radius, and let's go in and put some interesting values in for them. Now, what I've noticed here is add particle container. Um, it's probably not that great right now. Um, we probably need to hand it some sort of template data. But for now, just to be safe, I'm just going to stick these in as arguments. So I'm just going to pass them directly down to the actual constructor of particle container. Nothing too crazy. And they've got funny names because they came from member variables. So let's fix them up. That's easy enough. And that will make a new one. Okay, so let's compile this and just check that it all works. Okay, so we got one warning, a conversion warning. These are in, um, in this type of programming when you're dealing with fixed and float, bad news. So let's go and have a look 
M size is an algebraically fixed. Okay, immediately I see what the problem is. Um, we're giving a floating point number and storing it in a fixed point number, which is never going to work. It's horrible. You're going to get the wrong results. So let's fix that by simply wrapping our float in an IW fixed macro that will, as you can see up here, convert it into IW fixed for us using these little conversions and multipliers or whatever. So that should fix our compiler error. Okay, so that all worked out fine. Right, now that we have all of this code that we've written, several hundred lines, um, let's start hooking it up and actually giving it a quick test. The first thing we need to do is go into our source file in rcj.cpp. It's sort of the root file for Robots Can't Jump. And we need to make one of these particle managers. So I'm just going to add a little static pointer. Oh, before we can do that, we have to actually do the, include the header file. And because of the way we've structured our includes, we should really only have to do that. We won't, because Particle Manager includes everything for us, we don't have to do anything more than that. And we're just going to make a new Particle Manager. There we go. And now we need to construct it. And that happens in the same place as all this other stuff, which is over here. So we make a new Particle Manager. This could be done a little bit more elegantly. Um, but this is just the way we've decided to go, so it's fine. Having this little allocation won't hurt. Let's just have a quick look at its constructor. Okay, it only has a default constructor, so that's fine. That's great. And we need to destroy it too, which happens in shutdown. Very easy. We should actually assert against the values of all of these guys. This would be an ideal candidate for a little macro, but we'll just leave it as is for now. Uh, deleting an R pointer is valid in C++, or in recent revisions of it anyway. But um, in this particular case, so we never want these variables to be null because shutdown should only be called once. That's why I have that assert there. Right, so we're constructing and deconstructing it. Um, that's a very good place to begin our test. So let's see what happens when we test that. Okay, that didn't compile. Um, all right, so we need to have a quick look at our include path. Uh, what I think has happened here is, if you look at our MKB, our source include paths. So the include path it only starts from source, but we've actually stuck particle manager into the FX folder, as you can see here. So it's not going to find it. Uh, we need to change this slightly to be FX particles particle manager. That should fix it. Okay, that worked. So let's give it a run. Um, the construction and destruction of that class, um, I don't think it actually does anything right now, so it should work fine. Okay, that's good. That's all good. Cool. Now we can start um, actually adding and removing some particles. So after we create the system, I'm just going to put a comment here. Oops. The entire sense is adding things for me. Test particle system. Okay, so the particle manager has an add particle container, and this has a lot of different things. So maximum number of particles. Let's make it a hundred. Actually, let's start off with one just to be safe. Um, the position can be just at the origin of the world because we see that initially when we run the game. So that's a good place to begin. And the initial lifetime, we're just going to set that to one second. It's not used yet. And same for the spawn radius, we'll set that to um, 1.0 in world coordinates. And that's it. Okay. Let's hit a stick a breakpoint on there and try that out. Okay, let's hit the breakpoint. And right, let's step through. It's making a new particle container. Let's step into that guy. And now all of this has happened, so it's happened a little bit quickly. But if you look at um, number of particles and the stream colors, that's got nothing in it. It's all garbage at the moment. But that's okay because we don't really have to clear these things the first time we use them. That will be done for us by the update function because of the way we've written it. The particles doesn't contain anything yet either, so we're going to add a particle. And if we have some particles available, Oh, we've got a problem because mnumparticles is zero, 
So the maximum number of particles is one minus one is zero. Um, that's going to cause us a problem. And we've actually written that test incorrectly. It should be smaller than equal. Oops. It should be smaller than equal, not just smaller than, because otherwise we'll lose out on the last one, like you just saw. So we'll just stick a breakpoint there. Get rid of the other breakpoint. Okay, I don't know why where it is. I'm just going to run. There we go. Okay. And now that should work. Yes, okay. So we set up our particles. We only have one object. So now if we go and look at our particles list, the, the very first one is what the debugger shows us. That looks pretty good. Um, that looks like what we want. And we now have one particle, which is great. Okay. And we push it into the container and this will all work now. So that's fine. Uh, we don't need to debug that any further. Now we need to call these updates and render methods because we're happy with the uh, creation and everything. So there's a global update function which updates everything. And what we actually need to do is um, in uh, Robots Can't Jump, each game state may optionally update one of the subsystems. Um, the reason for this is because when you're in a menu, you don't want certain systems running like the game AI or whatever, you know, so you don't want to always just be updating everything. That's a bad approach. So each game state is allowed to define what it updates. So we'll have to go and look in the game states. If I can find them. Oh, here we go, game app. So the one we're interested in, the only game state that currently works is state gameplay. Um, this might change a little bit later on, but essentially all we need to do is just pop in this. Um, I prefer to do it before the physics simulation just in case. So game app and now immediately I can see we're going to have to change something. Um, the game application allows you to access all of these various different subsystems. And what we've actually gone and done is stuck it in this um, thing in the wrong place. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull pull this out of the um, the this particular area. But what I think we should do just for our test is not do that actually. Let's, let's not do that for our test. Let's go back to our previous little area that we were in. Come back. We'll just update it by hand in in Robots Can Jump's main file. So we're going to call S Particle Manager update. This is uh, just a test, so we're going to mark it as such. Oops. I just use these big blocks of comments to mark that as a test. Later on, we'll refine that. And in the render, do the same thing. Okay. So let's see what that does. Okay, it stops on that breakpoint, which we no longer need. But what we are going to do is we're just going to stick breakpoints and do a quick sanity check on these update functions and the render function. So let's run. Okay, we're going into update. We have one particle. The verts are initialized once. Um, that's just the debugger showing us that it's doing that. It probably won't happen in real life. Otherwise, we have options. Okay, so our stream index should be zero, that's right. The current vert should just have garbage in it, which is pretty much looks like it does. We copy the current vert in, now it should have some more uh, reasonable values. Yep, that looks a lot better. And we multiply, and let's go and have a quick look at that. So they're becoming a lot better now, these values. They're starting to look like what we want, because the size is 40. So uh, that's good. And now the current vert we add the position, which is zero, so that won't change convert. Stream indices gets given a zero, that's fine. The stream colors becomes non-garbage, and that's fine because that's our color. And we do that for each vert. Okay, we can step out of this function. I'm quite happy with how that works. And let's go and put a breakpoint in oh, where well, there's already a breakpoint. That's cool. We work out the view space location. It should be zero. That's correct. We set that. Set the streams, render, it doesn't crash, I'm very happy with that. And let's see what we get in the debugger. Oh, just get rid of that breakpoint too. Oh, we did, we did get a uh, little thing here. Oh, I think I know what that is. We'll just have to restart it because it's gone for too long without rendering. Okay. Um, now immediately uh, I can see that we're not sort of seeing anything 
but we'll investigate why that happens momentarily. Thanks for watching.